So today's video, today's gonna be a doozy. I have more detail in my reviews for um, betting predictions this week in football. And obviously I'm gonna hit the great news. I'm all Vegas out today because finally MLB had their votes this morning to approve relocation from, for the athletics from Oakland to Las Vegas, following in their old roommates, the Raiders footsteps. They got approved unanimously. Um, because there's a few more hurdles they still got clear, supposedly. We'll see. Um, but yeah, last week. 10 and 4 on my straight up predictions. Not bad. Um, this week I am gonna talk I'm gonna give some more input on the spreads and stuff as well as over under. So yeah, let's go right into it. I have one key note. I have the favorite win in every single game this week, which <laughs> That's a dangerous proposition. Um, I do have four of them not covering. There were some that were close, though. Like, I was going back and forth on Denver beating Minnesota, Baltimore over Cincy, Cleveland over Pittsburgh. There's a few where it's like, if it doesn't go that way, I won't be surprised. But yeah, let's get right to it. We got uh, Cincy at Baltimore. Minus three and a half with a 46-point total. I got Baltimore winning 31-27, so they do cover that three and a half. And going over. Dallas, minus 10.5 at Carolina. I have them winning 38-15. to 15, So easily covering. And well over the 42.5 points. Chicago at Detroit. Detroit's fair by 7.5. I like them 30-10. to 10, So again, easily covering. Only 40 points though. Below the 48. Let's see. We got the Raiders. At Miami, 13.5 point favorite for the Finns. I got them winning 28 to 17, so they don't quite cover the spread. And I do have it below that point total. Pittsburgh at Cleveland by one for Cleveland. 33 points, which is the lowest this week. Understandable. I got Cleveland winning 17 to 14, so they cover the spread. We get 31 though. Arizona at Houston. Houston's favored by five. 48 and a half is the point total. Um, I'm going to go below that at 44 points, Houston 31 to 13. The Giants at the Commanders, 37 points are what they're going. Um, I got it at 33, being 20, 20 to 13, Washington. So I got them winning, but they don't cover eight and a half. Another non cover is Jacksonville over Tennessee. I got their the Jaguars are favored by seven. I got them winning 24 to 20. So that's 44, good enough to be over on the points. Um, the Chargers at Green Bay. Yeah, um, my reaction is this way because I know Green Bay is going to get massacred again. That being said, I don't. I wasn't smart enough to check the weather. If the weather is funky at all, then yeah, this might vary. But um, as of right now, I got the Chargers went 35 to 13. And so that's easily going to cover the three points that they're favored. And that's good for 48 points. So over on the 44. Tampa Bay at San Fran. Dude, San Fran, they bounced back up to that well-timed bye week. I think they're going to do pretty good again this week. I got them covering 35-21. So they covered the 12 over the 41 and a half. That felt really low to begin with. I don't think I'm necessarily exasperated when I say 56 points. Uh, Jets at Buffalo. Buffalo favored by seven. Got 21 to 17 Buffalo. So they're not going to cover. And they're going to come in just short of the 39 and a half points at 38. Seattle, one point favorites against the Ra or at the Rams. I got them winning 24 21. So they cover. As, and they don't quite hit the 46. I got under. But I'm playing it close at 45. Minnesota, Denver. This is the game that gave me headaches. Originally, I was going to say Minnesota. I don't know. I think Denver might be cooking a little bit of momentum going on there. I hope you all see the pun there with let Russ cook. The two and a half point favorites. I got them winning by three, 20 to 17. So they do cover. Only 37 points, though. Not good enough for the 42 and a half. And then Monday night, Super Bowl rematch. Philly at KC. KC's favored by three. There's one I went back and forth on, too. Um, I think KC just needs to win more. So I think there will be some desperation. They're going to win 31 to 28. So that's going to actually, I don't know, that's going to cancel out. They're going to win three even. Um, there's a 45 and a half. What's the points? I got it at 59. Um, 
Again, weather conditions may play a factor in it. But at first glance, those are my predictions. Again, at that point, your weather will start to factor into some of these games, especially on the points totals. Now, for the whole Oakland Athletics relocation, I know we talk about baseball only because it's of personal interest to me. But my home city, Las Vegas, we're, looks like we're getting our baseball team finally. I say finally because I kind of, it's weird. We, we're going like reverse, the exact reverse order of how I thought we'd ever get teams. If Vegas was going to become a sports city, I thought for sure the order was going to be basketball, baseball, football, hockey. And we're going complete opposite. And I know we're going to get a basketball team here in a couple of years. Relocation, or not relocation, expansion's right. imminent. We'll get a team as well. We'll probably be Seattle. Just like the NHL. That I digress. So my understanding is, yeah, so it passed unanimously. They're not expected to move into the new stadium until the 2028 season, which feels way too long. But they're not going to start construction right away. I guess there's still a few more hurdles they got to supposedly clear. That and they're building, they got to tear down the former Tropicana Casino, the south end of the strip. And, you know, redo all the stuff that goes with that before you can really start doing anything else, right? That being said, obviously... Hotel rooms are booked out for a while, so you gotta give the hotel and their ownership some time to, um, you know, get the closing procedure started. Last I knew, there was a few different locations for where they could play because I believe they have two years left on their lease at the wonderful Oakland Coliseum. Who knows how long that actually lasts? So they might. I wouldn't be surprised if the city of Oakland told them to hit the bricks. There are options, last I knew, so there's a minor league ballpark in Sacramento, which I feel is kind of the most likely option. The option I think makes sense. Just do the upgrades you needed at Las Vegas Ballpark in Summerlin. Start getting locals to the game. Spend a little bit of money to, you know, add an extra, you know, do the clubhouse thing they got to do and the expansion of the lights. I understand there's the thought of nobody wants to play those travel days, afternoon, outdoors in Las Vegas in the middle of summer. I understand that. Baseball kind of pushed for this. I feel like they could kind of tweak their scheduling a little bit. That being said, if they do that and you're going to move there like as soon as possible and get fans of the seats, you need to dole out money. Big names. I'm just going to throw out the wild one that people will probably laugh about. In the comments, all like four people to watch this. Throw at least make a legitimate serious offer to Shohei Otani. You want butts and seats? Go get the greatest baseball player on earth. That's him. At that point, you're also going to get visitors that come to Vegas that probably did not care to see a major league baseball game at a minor league park. We'll go to that game, especially if their team's in town. But even if not, just to see Shohei Otani. So you either got to get him. Uh, I forget the kid over in Japan that a lot of teams are vying for right now. You could go and get him. I think everyone agrees Mike Trout's almost done in L- L.A. also with the Angels. Try to get him. You need at least one or two big names to get people to those games if you're going to do that strategy. Uh, the other options I've heard was up in Reno. So at least you're still in Nevada. This is the least likely of the options, I feel like. But they're minor league ballpark up there. Or there's talks of them trying to get a deal to uh, a rental deal to share the park with the Giants across the bay. That seems a little complicated, but it would also make sense. I probably have that tie. Realistically, I might even give that as the edge is like the second option, slightly over the Summerlin idea that I had in Vegas. But I really think that minor league park in Sacramento, from ideas I've heard at least, makes the most sense. Um, On the topic of baseball, let's hear it. Where does Shohei end up? Obviously, I shared my idea. Hold the athletics. But, hear me out. But, as a lifelong Red Sox fan, Shohei at Fenway, we need to spend money also to, I hope the Red Sox ownership is fully aware of that. And I understand when we hired Bloom as our general manager, they told him we need to cut back on payroll, build our farm system. It didn't work. The 
don't pick that up. Sorry, that was a really cringy moment right there, I feel like, for everyone. I hope you're mildly uncomfortable as much as I am. Also, we got another special guest. That's Ollie. He doesn't want to make predictions, though. I'm not even sure he wanted to be on camera, and he definitely didn't want to be picked up like that, I feel like. But yeah, that's uh, my week 11 predictions. I know I didn't really spend much time going over what I did didn't get wrong last week, so I'll just go over that. I'll just go over the four I got wrong, five I got wrong. Where am I at? Nope, I'm we got the wrong week. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Four I got wrong. Um, I had Buffalo beating Denver, Atlanta beating Arizona, Tennessee beating Tampa, and Cincy beating Houston. Those were the four I had wrong last week. Everything else was a win, at least straight up. Obviously, next week's will be a little more in-depth since we've added a few layers and wrinkles, more about the spreads involved and uh, the over-under of the points. Let's see. I'm trying to think. I could care less about talking about basketball right now. Sorry. Sorry. Actually, one second. What are your thoughts on these courts that everyone's got going on? I thought they were cool at first, but then you see them, and it's so distracting. Like, everyone in America is used to the same, generally speaking, the same colored hardwood, right? I know sometimes colleges do some cool stuff, and, but not the entire court. Like, it's way more distracting than watching a Boise State football game with the Smurf turf. That's just my thoughts. So, yeah, let's hear that in the comments. What are your thoughts? Like, where's Shohei going? And your thoughts on these fancy obnoxious basketball court designs and we'll see you next time good luck again as usual everyone and let's go make some money